So when you first signed on to do V, do you imagine that we'd still be talking about it 36 years later? I not only didn't imagine that it would have the lifespan that it had, but when we were first filming V, many of us were very experienced filmmakers, young people though we were, we, had, we were very experienced filmmakers. We didn't know that it was going to be as big as it was at the moment of its release, nor that the impact would be as, as telling as it was upon, uh, upon the viewing public. Uh, I remember the first time that we went uh, into a screening room. It was actually a, a beautiful big theater with a huge wide screen. And we saw what we'd been working on for so many months for the first time, all assembled, all put together, all the special effects and sound and everything. And we were stunned. It was as though we were watching a completely different production than from whatever it was that we imagined we were doing at the time. Could you have imagined that it's been so relevant even still what we're talking about in today's society? I think that I think uh, uh, themes of, uh, uh, of, of what holds society together and what, what tears society apart, those themes are universal themes and I think they're always going to be relevant. And I think there, there's going to be a necessity for things like V uh, to be revisited in order that society remember why, what it is that's cohesive and coherent about it and why it is that we should all stand together and, and treat each other well. I'm going to read this because I'm not going to get it right otherwise. So in 2005, Entertainment Weekly named V one of the 10 best miniseries on DVD. And in 2008, they placed it on the Sci-Fi 25, the genre's best since 1982 list. As the creator, how does that feel for you? Did you have any idea you'd be creating something so iconic? It's, it's funny. Um, no, I had no idea it would become that iconic. I, I had been, I've been lucky. I think when you create one iconic thing in your career, it's a big deal. Uh, and I had done the, created the Bionic Woman, and then the Incredible Hulk came along. Stan Lee, of course, created the character, but it was the tier, CV, series that, you know, got it. So those two became iconic, sort of in their own way. And then V came along, and, and you know what I think, Allison? It, it, it was because it's such a classic story. Because, as I said, often I think about it as like Spartacus or the revolt, and the revolt of the slaves, you know, or the American Revolution or apartheid. It's really a story about um, any society when when a hyperpower rolls in and you know you they're going to be people that will suck up to it like the Vichy French yeah. did mm -hmm. to aggrandize themselves yeah power I want to be next to power right you know? <laughs> yes. or Allison in this case uh, and um, uh, and then there are the people that are trying to keep their heads down well the dodge the bullet I'm not Jewish maybe they won't get me uh, you know and um, uh, and that's what the scientists of course represent in V are the right. scapegoated people right. like been branded as others, as has been happening recently in our country. Uh, and then there are the people that say, no, no, this is wrong, and we have to fight back against this, and we may get killed doing it, but we have to speak up and say, no, this is wrong. And, uh, and I think that's a story that is as in the public consciousness as much now as it ever has Absolutely, been. Absolutely, yes. And uh, uh, particularly in the climate that we're in now, and uh, uh, because part of what V is about is about a, how a charismatic leader uh, can... Uh, can suck you in and uh, with promises and as a matter of fact that lines even in the script Mark uh, Mark's character Mike Donovan says how did how did a person like that get to be your leader and Martin says charisma and uh, promises and circumstances and and not enough of us spoke up to question it before until it was too late and then he says it's happened in your country too hasn't it and, and your planet too and of course it has um, and it's a it's a it's a scary time uh, I think for us in in this in this society right now and I think that's why it's bubbled back up and and why the novel that inspired me originally it can't happen here right. it's been back in the press yes. more and more all yes. the time it's uh, it's it's so important to uh, to be able to hang on to our values and to and to have the profiles and courage that John Kennedy wrote about you know? yes I absolutely agree with you um, looking back when to the very beginning when you were writing, when you were creating this, is there anything you would go back and change? <laughs> it's interesting because now as we're looking to, to move forward and do V the movie mm -hmm. and take it into the two sequels of, uh, based on my novel, the second, v, v the Second Generation, uh, you know, I went back and looked carefully at the script and said, okay, well now, what do I want to fix? <laughs> what do I want to reimagine here? And I looked at it and the more I looked at it, the more, and the more input I got from fans was, don't mess with it. Don't try to reinvent ah, the wheel. They like you know, it. That's right. Oh, the, you know. And so, what I'm, what we're hoping to do in the movie is a real faithful um, uh, remake, uh, 
not a reimagining, but a remake, then certainly it'll all be brought up into the 21st century and all of that. But the bottom line is it's a classic story. That's, I think, what has given it its staying power because mm -hmm. it just it doesn't go away. It's a true story of life from humanity. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Well, thanks for talking with us. We're excited to see it coming out on Blu-ray. Oh, me too. The Blu-ray edition is just sensational. It is so cool to have an archive quality like this is. It's great. Great. We're excited. Thank you so much.